and we are live. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to a very exciting stream. I'm very excited because I'm looking forward to hearing these two gentlemen's take on last week and where we go from here. So we will talk about Bitcoin ETF, what happens now, second week. How about proxies? How about... Ah, you can read the agenda. How are you doing? How are you doing, um, James? Good, good. It's, uh, you know, we have a historic week behind us that we waited kind of seven years for. It was exciting for the first 20 minutes and then it fizzled out. It became a big anticlimax, <laughs> which triggers a lot of questions in my mind. And we'll probably talk about some of that today is how, how literally 25,000 Bitcoin can be hoovered from the system in two days and the price go down. That's the question you need to ask yourself. Why? So anyway. It's very interesting. Ivan, how are you doing? Check, check. Yeah, guys. Uh, Monday morning, straight uh, from McDonald's, like we joked. Uh, I, I'm here in between my shifts, guys. And my new boss is telling me I got to be quick here. No, I'm joking, obviously. But, you know, people are, are, are freaking out, saying, you know, bulls are rigged. But uh, listen, we're here to really give some more lights on this. Because uh, when you look at what actually is happening, a lot is um, trading OTC. I'm sure we're going to get into this. And uh, the the bullishness is bubbling underneath the surface. So let's yeah. let's, let's explore this uh, together. Definitely, definitely. And uh, guys, welcome to Ask Question. We have, for example, Nathan writing here, who in the heck is still selling BTC? Are there short-term holders out there or are there long-term holders getting flushed out? What is really going on? What's happening here with uh, Grayscale and the new ETFs and what is going on? I think we should definitely start there and try to understand what happened the first couple of days. And uh, then we take it from there where we think, of course, I have my idea and uh, I'm sure you two have as well. So let's take it from there. Should we start with what actually happened? James, do you want to start? Yeah, it's um, it's funny. I, I have a, a little slide that kind of breaks it all down in simple terms. So for, for those that are alarmed, they just need to understand this. And what I did was, this is actually the, my biggest ever tweet in two days, over a million views. I've never had that before. But really, it talks about how, you know, BlackRock, in simple terms, there's a lot more to the tweet and all the numbers. But BlackRock, in two days, took 11,500 Bitcoin from the system. All ETFs combined took 23,000 from the system. Um, and there's but somewhere between 1.2 million and 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges. I assume that one third of those are for sale, not all of them. There are people that keep their Bitcoin on exchanges because they do not trust self-custody. So if you take one third of that balance, you know, you're somewhere about 650,000 Bitcoin are left. That means in simple terms, with this continued pace, and remember, there's also some dumpage happening from Grayscale, there's 28 days of Bitcoin supply left on exchanges, okay? And miners are beginning to hodl. And post having that's only 14 days. So the thesis is still there that this thing is as hard as can be. And we just haven't, as you, as Ivan correctly said, there's stuff bubbling under the surface. There's also some probably manipulation because if you are launching a new product, you don't want it to go to the moon in the first two days. You want to get your bags filled. You want to get your customers' bags filled at a low price. So, so I can't put my finger on exactly what's happening, but between OTC and everything else, and the OTC stuff is going to dry up real soon too, um, something funky is going on. But for everybody to be alarmed, literally, my strategy is every time Bitcoin goes under 42000 I buy it because I want to take it from the hands of BlackRock. That's it. So that's my strategy. What do you think? Ivan, what's your take? What's going on? Yeah, well, uh, number one is this whole thing with expectations versus uh, the reality. And um, no matter how great the reality is, people thought it's going to be trillions on day one, which obviously hasn't happened. And I know we've been discussing in our streams as well, this expectation versus reality. I think UCTO was also speaking about it. And that's one one, um, uh, one uh, factor. And another factor is like James and I just said with the, with the OTC, I don't think that the demand has yet uh, has hit the spot markets yet and that's still uh, still to come and all in all the amounts of marketing we've seen uh, from uh, blackrock in particular towards one 
important group, one important audience, namely the boomers. They're, they're, they're shilling Bitcoin to the boomer population, which is amazing because they have most of the money in the society. They bought the houses for like uh, $500 uh, 50 years ago. Now it's worth uh, millions of dollars. They have the biggest stock portfolios. And of course, that opens a lot of doors. Uh, now that we have this uh, a bit of a sell the news uh, event, the key thing is to zoom out. If you zoom out on the price chart, you see that we're at the same price as last week, as the week before that. So it's not really like a respectable sell the news. It's not like a big respectable dump even. Uh, let's see how this will evolve. And also curious to hear your CTO uh, thoughts uh, thoughts as well. I know that you live streamed when <laughs> when it was uh, announcing. And uh, what's your what's your view on this? Yeah. So before I completely answer the question, so I've also tried to figure this out, right? And I followed this guy, for example, Eric Balchunas, very useful um, um, gentleman. He is an ETF analyst for Bloomberg, <clears throat> and he has been sharing a lot of data. So. He posted this about total flow, flows based on the first two days with I share then positive flow, fidelity, bitwise, and falling, and then grayscale minus 579, uh, <clears throat> and so on. So what is really happening here, James? Is grayscale selling and all the other ones buying? Is that how we should interpret this? You are on mute, I think, James. Correct. People are looking for a place with lower fees, and they're getting out. They were just waiting for the discount to go to zero. And if they can trade tax-free, they're selling their GBTC, and they're buying their IBIT or whatever else in simple terms. And Eric has his finger on the pulse like nobody else out there. But there's other stuff also kind of happening behind the scenes, and that is kind of the OTC balances that are out there because a lot of the initial buying is coming from the OTC. And the other thing as well, you can't just look at volume because a lot of people are scalping and playing the arbitrage between real Bitcoin price and the spot ETF price all across the board. And I was calculating price fluctuations as high as 6.16, um, 6.83%, 6.48%, 6.18%. The actual least amount of price fluctuation was with GBTC at minus 4.43%. So the, the price fluctuations that he has there, I would disagree with a little bit. They were extreme. And we can get into exactly why that happens too later because I, I, I'm still flabbergasted that in this day and age, we live in a world where they are settling two days later. <laughs> they're yeah. taking your money on a Thursday and they're buying Bitcoin on a Saturday when the price goes down $5,000. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> we should yeah. come back to that. We should yeah. come back to that. But just to answer Ivan's question, what's my take on this? Because this was exactly, I had the two scenarios, basically. And scenario one was exactly this, that I felt that it should pump on the approval. You know, the approval news, it's very positive. How can it not pump? And it did, right? We had a pump up to 40 9,100. So almost 50,000. We had to pump to almost 50,000. And then I felt that what could happen is that the volumes are not there immediately. Those pension funds and everything, they maybe they're not sitting there with a finger on the trigger immediately. Maybe they need time. Perhaps, you know, after it's approved, they need to have some strategy meeting and discuss, should we move into this new digital asset or is it a scam? What do you think? What do other people think? And so maybe it takes some time, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, something before the inflow happens. And then during that time, it could get like, okay, what now? The big news has already happened. And that's kind of a feeling of disappointment, even though it was successful. And I felt that could happen. And I said that I see two scenarios. Either we get the retracement to 40,000, which has almost happened now, or we could get the retracement to 30,000, which would mean that this is much would get go much deeper before the inflows come. But what I don't quite understand is that there is inflows. Doesn't this mean that there are inflows actually already day two? So there were actually people with demand immediately which i thought maybe there there wouldn't be but but there is isn't there yes and, and one, of, one of the things that does happen behind the scenes you had a lot of people leveraged long 
I think a quarter of a billion got lost in the dip on the very first day of the ETF because they thought, okay, ETF is here. We're going to the moon. Let's do 10x, 100x leverage longs. And they all got wiped. So that yeah. that basically pulls a lot of their Bitcoin back into the system. So that was, that was one flush. The other flush is the GBTC flush that's happening. But then there's also the OTC balance flush. And they have to go there first to pull their coins off. And then there'll be the supply crunch. And that's coming. Mm. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. And you also have to bear in mind that the first two days, nobody's going to touch this thing really because they don't know where it's going to go or how it works. Or they got to make some phone calls. They got to figure out which product's the best, etc. But that will all come next week and this week, the week after. The money will slowly accelerate in. And people in the... And the retirement homes is like, hey, uh, what are we doing now? We got, you know, $60,000 sitting here in cash. So I get some of this Bitcoin stuff. I see it on the TV all the time. What should I do? That money, yeah. big money. And that's coming. exactly that's what I'm feeling also that it takes maybe a little bit of time. Now it was actually successful. The ETF launched. It's trading. Yeah. It's working. OK, then now they will start thinking, should we get into this or not? And reasonably, it takes a little bit of time. That, that's how I'm thinking. So I'm hoping that there is like a little bit, uh, the deeper retracement, the better, because I think then they will decide that, yeah, let's put the uh, 2%. Let's risk 2% of our billions and billions into this. And uh, that could make a lot of uh, impact, actually, on the price. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I had one more thought about the first bullet point before we move on to the next bullet point. And that was really this one. Of course, I wasn't there, but I have learned that something similar happened with the gold ETF, um, that up to the ETF, it was like front running and, you know, buying the rumor as it ran up to it. Then it launched. Then there was an initial disappointment where not much happened. And everyone, oh no, you know, this was supposed to be so bullish and then nothing happened and they panicked and they sold and they dipped fast and hard for being gold. You know, here is like uh, one day in crypto is like one year in, in gold or like at least one week in crypto is like one year in gold. So it kind of dipped and everyone was very shocked. But then turned out it was actually right. It just took a little bit of time for everyone to get into this. And then uh, gold had this enormous bull run that created all these gold bugs and and uh, so on and well, so forth well, that, they were that just chart, early. yeah that chart actually is wrong because the gold etf I, didn't launch till 2003 but if you take the gold chart over the last 20 years you'll see for the first eight years after the etf launch it actually went straight up there was no there was no bear market in gold <laughs> that's how big the supplies were I'm sorry yeah i said wrong it's not the it's not the etf that um Launched that's, that's, that's kind of moving off the gold standard. Uh, exactly. It was, stuff. yeah, yeah, exactly. The Americans were finally allowed to own gold again. And that was the event that people were trying to front run. And then it kind of backed up. But then actually, it was correct. It actually led to the biggest bull run of this asset's history. It just took a little yeah. bit of time to get going. And, and and remember, people need to realize that, you know, you can't really compare gold to Bitcoin because Bitcoin is so, so superior. You want more gold, you dig a little bit deeper, you get more gold. And the inflation is there and it's manipulated and everything else. Bitcoin is verifiable and it's hard as hell. And the money coming in, if you look at the, the gold ETF, eight years it went up, but it only 8X'd. But again, mm. the more the price goes up, the deeper the miners dig, it's that simple. With Bitcoin, you can't do that. <laughs> the more price goes up, there's there's no way of increasing supply at all. And that's what people fail to realize. So when you see, and this is what has me very excited, this is a theory that maybe we will not have a bear market again, because if the money supply keeps dripping in, and remember, we're only going to need like, what is it, 450 million bucks a day, which is nothing. Nothing when there's 100 trillion of money in the world. It's peanuts. All we need is that to sustain the price. As long as we get that flow coming in, and by the way, that assumes every miner sells every Bitcoin in real time, which they're not going to do as well. It's just we're setting up for a perfect economic scenario, which I think is very exciting. Yeah. So, and what is happening now with the proxies, like a MicroStrategy and um, Grayscale and so on? Will 
what are we seeing here? Are we seeing ETF taking over that use case? Maybe, James, I feel that we this is really your ballpark. <laughs> I give the word to you again, then Ivan will get to talk ample time during during this show. Yeah, no this is your speciality, you. James. Yeah, so, so proxies are facing a perfect storm right now. You have Michael Saylor who decided to sell. People would question the timing of the sale, but I think it's better he sells now than at the top of the market. And he has expenses that he needs to pay for. You know, he doesn't take a salary. He needs to pay for his boat maintenance and other stuff like that. Maybe buy some more personal Bitcoin for himself. And by the way, he owns 37,000 Bitcoin as well. His company owns 190,000 pretty much more or less. So between those two, <laughs> it's nearly a quarter of a million Bitcoin, which is huge. Um, but it's just, I think the amount he's going to sell is going to sell it gradually over the next three to six months. And it's less than 8% of his stock. So it's not like he's dumping everything and rugging everybody. So everybody kind of freaks out. But there is some of that sell pressure. And that combined with the fact that you have the ETF as an alternative, those that were in MicroStrategy as a proxy, now they can flip over to another choice. And then on the miners, same thing. The miners are selling shares. They're diluting because they need to uh, modernize their rigs so they can be competitive after April 17th. If they do not run at a high level of effectiveness and efficiency, they're toast. You can't run an S9 from, what, 2020 and expect to be profitable. You need the state-of-the-art rigs. So that's my take on that. Yeah. Great, 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 great. We have there, one there, there you go. Actually, Corey just said on the on the coat there, he's selling in tranches to buy Bitcoin. I mean, this guy, you know, for people who doubt him and think he's not all in, you couldn't be more in than Sailor. Literally, he is like to the wall, if you know that expression. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. There's one more thing about the ETF and thing, because as you said, there's two things here which I didn't get until last Friday. One is that they don't buy the Bitcoin immediately. If money flows in, they buy it like a day or two days later. So there seems an obvious opportunity here for like BlackRock to manipulate the market. And then can the market manipulate BlackRock in another way? Because Bitcoin is trading 24-7 while they close their trades on the weekend. So how is this going to work? I am a yeah. little bit actually not sure how who is going to scam who whom here yeah well, uh, well that, yeah ivan what do you think about the the lag yeah i mean when, when it comes to uh, all of this etf stuff the way i see it is that we have the halving coming up and the market is going to switch so quickly now we, we're going to discuss the etf maybe today and tomorrow th this week but very quickly the market is going to recalibrate itself to be excited about the the halving and that's uh, why it's important to see the whole picture and the whole picture is not only the etf is the halving election year uh, lower interest rates also insane backlash against the institutions that are still uh, fighting against the etf like you have cto in this uh, slide right there blackrock versus vanguard i don't know if this is true but there was some, uh, there, there there were some tweets saying that vanguard is considering changing their position because of the backlash they got from the investment community people basically wiring money away from them and sailor has done it already since uh, 2021 when he wanted to use uh, merrill lynch i think for buying bitcoin they said no and then he just transferred the 200 million dollars away from them the same thing is happening right now with uh, vanguard so it, it seems to me that uh, whether you know buy the rumor sell the news this and that etf we, we just gotta move past that and look on the big picture and uh, by the way good Good point about this uh, two-day delay because potentially there are already there is already demand that has not hit the spot market because of this delay. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, this is how I see it: just zoom out, see the big picture, and think ahead because the halving is already in April. Definitely, yeah. and I also feel like this. Okay, OTC means that on that day that trade maybe didn't move the market. But if demand keep coming on one side, that suddenly there is no seller, uh, OTC or not, there is no one to and match. Is there any metrics on that? Like, can there we is, see yeah. the size? Yeah. What is the website for that? Because that would be super interesting to see the size of the uh, OTC deals. Well, I have and a like chart. I'll, I'll pull up that chart that shows you the actual OTC balance. 
um, on Thursday. There was about 1,300 Bitcoin in it. It's managed by Coinbase and a few others. Then it fell to 690, and then within an hour, it fell to 600. So there's 600 Bitcoin left in the OTC, which which is going to be depleted real soon. Like one whale. Yeah, but but the, what's fascinates me is the whole lags of everything there. And uh, Mike in the comments said it very well, that it cuts both ways. So first of all, if you look at this, this what is very interesting about this little chart here is it shows you uh, showing IBIT's day one volume broken down by time of day and exchange, which shows you how many exchanges it gets listed on and how it gradually peters out. So different times of the day, you've got different Bitcoin prices. In addition, probably this is more important is how the market makers make money on this thing. So obviously Bitcoin, the price goes up and down like crazy. Uh, there's probably some type of price manipulation there between the OTC desks, Coinbase, et cetera, and the BlackRock. I can't believe they take in money on a Thursday and they buy Bitcoin on a Saturday morning. That should be criminal in my opinion. Uh, but the 24 seven nature of decentralized exchanges, it really is an opportunity for non-ETF customers to play the arbitrage around the spot ETFs because they move too slowly. And anything that moves slow, you have an opportunity. Now, if the price is going down, the ball is in their park. If the price is going up, the ball is in your park. That's why, you know, even a day like today, you see Bitcoin under 42K. BlackRock has to buy that. But they're, they're not in the office today. The markets are closed. So if you see a Bitcoin under 42K and you don't have any yet, get it. Because the price is going up. It's the safest trade that you can possibly see right now. Um, and there is, you know, there's still huge, massive discrepancies between the net asset value, the price of the ETF and Bitcoin price. And that's not going to go away until things really smoothen out. And this is the problem we have when you don't have a real time world. Like, for example, we all trade now on DEXs. It's real time, instant finality. You know, we swap something out of our wallet into something else that shows up in our wallet in a second. That's so far from the traditional finance world. It's stunning. So we have an opportunity here. So I look at this as a positive, not a negative. That's very interesting. <clears throat> Let's take some comments. Like this channel hasn't been manipulating manipulating the market. Thanks for the confidence, guys. It was yeah, how are we manipulating my, the market? How, it was definitely trying. my Bitcoin wrap that you know manipulated <laughs> the market up to 69k. It must have been. So thanks for your confidence. Um, <clears throat> let's take a few uh, questions. Uh, now let's see here. I lost it. But the question was, but, why buy? Why, why, one, why? one thing to add on this whole like selling is like, people are obviously worried that this is 2019 repeating, that we have this uh, big run up uh, in the middle of the bear market, then massive dump back to almost the lows, and then the real bull market starts. And my, my view on this, the way I think about it is that the run up this time has been very gradual. If you compare it to 2019, 2019 was straight up. This one has been way slower, all kinds of pullbacks, all kinds of different um, uh, of different dumps and hesitations along the way where the buyers had to confirm the bullishness each time, come in and buy Bitcoin and pump it higher. This didn't happen in 2019 where we just, you know, exploded very quickly. It was a crazy, you know, some kind of bullish momentum and uh, we never got the chance to reconfirm our, our bullishness uh, in a dump. And uh, the second thing is what I mentioned before, just this whole year is one of, of one of a kind. Like to sell now, thinking that um, oh, ETF will sell the news is going to be 2019. That's like the, you know the average mid curve thing to do. Like the good game, uh, good game podcast guy said. I, I always forget his name. The, the the Asian dude, he's amazing. It's like the the most mid curve thing you can do, and mid curve meaning the like distribution belt distribution curve of your uh, of your knowledge in crypto. So uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not there. I I think I'm to the right of the of the <laughs> of the curve <laughs> but guys maybe we're to the left uh, of the curve uh, being uh, bullish but it's a bull market you got to be bullish in a bull market don't sell bitcoin in a bull market very simple yeah exactly right. eric Husman, why would you buy a spot etf uh bitc etf when you can buy the real thing i think the answer is that there are big institutions who can't they are not allowed to in their current investment uh, um kind of framework while they can buy if it's an ETF. And um, there's also the custody aspect. A lot of people maybe aren't suitable actually to hold their own keys, <clears throat> either from a security perspective, if they're very wealthy individuals or just from a handling perspective. So 
this can offer a way into Bitcoin for people who cannot get in today. Yeah, and also retirement accounts. You have very limited selection and options. So if you have a million dollars, like just to share some statistics about Vanguard that was mentioned earlier, at least 10,000 people left Vanguard and joined Fidelity in two days. 10,000 people. Their average bag size was $600,000. That's six billion walking out the door in 48 hours. Think about that for a second. The Vanguard guys are like, what the hell just happened? It's if and, and and Fidelity didn't even do any advertising, and all of a sudden their AUM goes up by six billion at least, probably a lot more, just in two days. Their their reputation is tarnished and destroyed forever. But that's that's the key here is the retirement accounts. People need to not understand how huge they are. And for the first time ever, they have access to a new asset class in a time when the bond market's toast. You know, the 60-40 mm. portfolio is gone. What are you going to replace that 40% with? Okay, you have your stonks, but you're going to need something else. And that new bond replacement is Bitcoin. It's going to be for many people. And then once the machine turns around and has, you know, you got 3.7 million investment advisors on the planet. Once they they get their orders given by their motherships to say, you need to advise your customers to allocate 1% or 2% or 3% or 5% or 10% of Bitcoin. That's it. Game over. 3.7 million people pumping Bitcoin on our behalf. Exactly. And the amazing thing is that these institutions are out marketing now. Now it's no longer like us three guys who seem to the mo you know average person to be completely lunatics. Now it's these like smooth talking, nice yeah, guys. You, you see uh, the this is how you market to rich boomers, folks. The calm disposition, <laughs> easy to understand investment case, soft new age music, suit with no, no tie. Everything about this says it's okay now. The adults are here. I love it. It's like <laughs> these guys are out there marketing now and in a way that we could never do, honestly. And that's amazing to see. So this is then BlackRock on one side. This guy is uh, here at uh, BlackRock. And then on the other side then, we have Vanguard. I saw that someone wrote that Vanguard has become like the new SEC. Now we kind of like SEC because they approved the Bitcoin ETF. So now everyone hit on Vanguard instead. But I saw a perspective actually from the same guy that I don't think they have anything against BTC as such. It's just that they don't invest in gold and thing, things like gold and Bitcoin was the statement. We don't invest in things like gold and Bitcoin, but it's like those are the, basically the same thing. They don't invest I mean, in... He, he said we don't invest in stable things like yeah. gold and Bitcoin. So you have exactly. gold here, very stable, and then you have Bitcoin also very safe and stable. <laughs> and exactly. yeah, it seems that he, he, he wants cash flow. So maybe he waits, the Vanguard CEO waits for the ETH ETF, or maybe Solana. I know you, James, want Solana. Maybe we can get both ETH and Solana, which are going to produce the income for him. And he will like it more, this productive, productive assets. Exactly. And apparently this comes already from the founder or the person who took Vanguard uh, to what it is today, that he it was kind of his investment philosophy. And um, he, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, he wants flashing. like cash, cash generating assets. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin isn't that. It's, uh, it's like gold or something better. And, but uh, why yeah, do they sense. care? Are, aren't they more of a platform where you, you you know they cater to investors or they pick for you as a parent I, this I, I get I get that they have their own opinions but aren't they like an investment plat I've never used them obviously uh, maybe you guys know but a platform to me is a website where you click buttons and buy things you want to buy so why would that website hinder me and have their own uh, philosophies yeah. and stuff yeah this, this uh, is do you guys know <laughs> I do I've got the exact answer so first of all uh, Bogle's view was the returns don't come from the stock market, they come from the corporation. So if something didn't have a corporation behind it, they were against it. Second of all, you've got to learn that everything in this world in finance is all sales and marketing. So they have these products on their shelves called mutual funds and passive index funds, etc. They wrap them up, baggage them up, and then they work with corporations to earn their pension fund, 401k, retirement business. And then they mandate that they can only buy these funds. 
That's where Vanguard makes the money. Bitcoin is a threat to that system. They no longer control what's on the shelf. They make their own can of beans and can of soup and whatever. They put it on the shelf. With this now, it's a threat to their entire well-being. And that's why they don't like it. So that's yeah. kind of the simple. They story. have micro strategy. I heard Vanguard is like one no, of the biggest. Uh, yeah. What's up with that? And also, uh, yeah. they have they own part of BlackRock as well. Yeah, so that's part of their passive fund investing, and people always misunderstand. Like, Look, the good microstrategy. No, no, no. They have to own microstrategy because it's part of the Russell two thousand, and they have Russell two thousand passive index funds. So every time that index goes up. And the price of microstrategy goes up. They got to buy more microstrategy to fit that ratio within the passive index fund. So that's the reason mm. behind it. They do not like Bitcoin. If they had their druthers, they would not be buying microstrategy. But to mimic the performance of the Russell 2000, et cetera, they have to do it. I'm fine with this, the statement that we don't buy stable things like gold and Bitcoin. <laughs> then I think we, we give them a pass. And uh, they're not against it. Uh, so then uh, one question, one more question. There. What will keep the OTC buying from continuing forever? And I mean, the short answer is that there has to be a seller. And if those sellers run out, there is no more OTC deal. That's, that's the thing. So short term, OTC will not affect the price. But long term, it definitely affects the price. doesn't matter where you buy because eventually there is no seller at that price. Then you have to buy at higher price to get the deal through. Yeah, and I do actually have the OTC balance slide. I shared it on Saturday, but I'm probably not going to be able to find it now. Hmm. Let me dig for it. Maybe on maybe it was on Friday. You can come Let back me... to it. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's switch gears. My thought here was, will BlackRock now do the same journey that we've all done? Everyone in crypto, almost. And not not exactly everyone, because some people they start with Bitcoin and they end at Bitcoin. But most people go through this journey. You start with Bitcoin, you fall in love with Bitcoin, and then you find another project, be it Ethereum or Solana or something, and then you go from there. And then you realize, oh, but there's even more exciting projects. There's these Dixies and there's these airdrops and there's this whole ecosystem, and you kind of fall in love and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into this, and you branch out to more and more assets. Thinking about BlackRock, who just started this journey, will they will they go the same journey? Will they kind of continue now with Ethereum or Solana, and then they will be investing in Dexis? And what do you guys think? Well, I mean, we, we all got into crypto, and then we felt, what the hell, this goes up. It's actually full of opportunity, and uh, also new tech, it's so interesting. So if their business works out and it all checks out like they want and they see true demand, why not? It was kind of like A16Z. A16Z, though, they went hyperspeed. I remember reading about A16Z investing in DeFi in 2019 and just, you know, just uh, putting their toe in the water a bit, testing out. But then within a year, they were like in all DeFi products. So that was super quick. I don't know if BlackRock is going to be as quick, but if the first iteration works out and then you can go to ETH and that has uh, passive income or Solana, also passive uh, passive income with the yields, uh, then it's, uh, it's it, it could be an even stronger case, easier to sell to more institutions as they get into proof of stake. I think proof of stake is going to be very lucrative, extremely lucrative for for Wall, Wall Street because they love that uh, uh, that income, uh, monthly income that money produces new money, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what we're here for with the uh, with the proof of stake uh, coins. And that's what Vanguard didn't find in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah they want. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I, I do think it's possible. Mm, just coming back, try to I tried to take some questions here. Do you guys think that Wall Street will continue to manipulate the price? Ladder up and, uh, you know, steeper down, step price down. Um, and then, you know, they will dump, we buy it back up. And so, Do you think manipulation will increase or decrease now that institutions have come in? It's going to be a different kind. It's not like we're f free of manipulation. <laughs> I, I mean, with all of the exchanges, FTX and stuff, uh, if we have probably a lot of manipulation. But it's just, no, we're ma manipulated by, oops, James, 
check check i mean we're, we're let's see if he comes back we're I'm manipulated sorry. by our own degen uh, degen kind so to speak <laughs> and uh we're i mean we're dealing in the same coins we're, we're in the same ecosystem but it's going to be very different i mean one way I, i've been speaking about this on my channel before that uh, is going to be you know this uh, this spaceship coming into our space and we're like indigenous uh, people like we don't really understand what's happening for a while it's going to be like this for us to to switch the thinking and and seeing new market participants on a whole different level i don't really know what it will lead to it could lead to uh, the four-year cycle being distorted a lot for example let's say we pump very very fast and then dump fast way before the four-year cycle should have ended and this is what bob lucas uh, calls the left translated cycle maybe that will be an effect of this you know new type of manipulation that we don't recognize our cycles anymore but uh, it's going to be definitely new type and we're definitely not free of it uh, right now anyway it's uh, it's happening all the time with uh, with the exchanges and the market participants already yeah agreed 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 <clears throat> by the way Should i tried we... to, i tried to upload a updated deck and it limits me to one deck remove the hmm. other and then tried to log in and kick me out so I am. Uh, I'm going to do it share different the way. Screen, James, if you... Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to upload into. I'm going to turn my camera into a slide. It's mm. because it won't let me upload a second deck, and that's where I have the OTC stuff. And I removed right, the first right. one, so I can't even upload anything now. Another limitation of Streamyard. Anywho, um, yeah. let me see. I'm going to switch cameras, and and I do have that OTC slide that you were all looking for. I'm going to change this to this. Uh, all right, so the OTC slide is here, I think. No, that's the exchange volume. This is the OTC balance, everybody. I'm going to blow this up so you guys can see it. Let me know if you're tracking. And uh, this shows you the actual amount of OTC. This is actually from a guy called Black Kiwi on Twitter. But you saw that the available Bitcoin balance in the OTC decreased significantly from 1250 to 600 and that was the delta between thursday and friday and it was actually 690 and then 90 got, got pulled out immediately and there was such a large inflow that this will be depleted in no time and this represents three of the major otc desks uh, i can't remember the names of them offhand right now but basically that's the otc story right now and the other thing that's kind of interesting that's happening is the bitcoin exchange volume flows there's only been 180 days in the history of Bitcoin where there's been such such massive deposits and withdrawals on the Bitcoin network, and this has never happened before. The combined flow is 4.07 billion using the 30-day moving average, and this indicates a heightened level of speculative activity among investors, and this probably explains why the price is kind of being suppressed right now because of all the speculations happening behind the scenes and all the movements of Bitcoin, etc. So. That's part of the explanation, I think, as to what's going on. That's good. That's good to hear. Let's uh, take one question before we move on. When is a good time to get out of ETFs and take money and move into BTC itself? I mean, I yes, don't know. I haven't right. figured out any way to arbitrage this mm -hmm. uh, reliably. I think they should uh, track over time. They should be similar. They should track the same gains, isn't it? Yeah, I think the easy way to play it is determine where the support and resistance lies and use that as a signal when to play the R between. But it's very difficult because it's so cumbersome with the time lag to play that on ETFs. Uh, if they were truly real time, it would work, but it doesn't. Yeah, so I think any obvious hard. strategy will get eaten up. Oh yeah. Pretty quickly. <clears throat> uh, let's move on. Has the narrative already shifted? It's like the Bitcoin centric part of the cycle already over is it has it already happened and uh, it's now about okay what will be the next etf is it ethereum etf or or uh, what or are we still in a bitcoin focused part of the cycle and leading into that question we had this uh, statement when the etf was approved by gary gensler who we now love because he approved uh, he voted yes for the etf I'm joking a little bit. Of course, he had... But, 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 uh, but yeah. just about that joke. You know that Gary Gensler is the most innovative head of the SEC. No one before him approved a crypto ETF. He's the first one. 
And this is great for his career as the whole TradFi space recalibrates towards crypto. And he's going to always be remembered as the, the guy that approved it. And I think he made a smart move there because, yes, he needs to please his uh, connections in the banking space. He And he can tell them, just like this uh, article yeah. said, he said that, he doesn't like Bitcoin <laughs> to keep everyone happy. Bankers yeah. happy. He said he doesn't like it. He has a good career in the crypto space. Exactly. And look how happy he is here. It's fantastic. Uh, but he does says here that today's <clears throat> it's one non-security commodity, Bitcoin. It should in no way signal the commission's willingness to approve listing standards for crypto asset securities and uh, so on and so forth. Say so to kind of prevent this question that it is it. You only get Bitcoin, nothing else. But what do you guys will have think will happen from here? Will the narrative start on okay, what's the next ETF? Is going is it going to be Ethereum, Solana, XRP, or will there be no more ETF discussions? What do you think ha happens if we talk about the narrative first, not about what will actually happen? Because yeah, I think they have to approve the Ethereum ETF. I know that many believe there is. You know, I think it's 60 or 70% chance it will be approved within the next six months. But a lot of people have actually moved the trade to speculate on that approval because that will also pump the Ethereum price. But uh, we don't know if it's going to happen. We may have to wait for Gary Gensler to exit the building. But the same legal arguments that forced Gary Gensler to approve the spot ETF for Bitcoin are the same for Ethereum. They'd be the same for XRP and Cardano and Solana, like if, they, if the court didn't judge XRP to be a security, and if XRP is not a security, no crypto pretty much is. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of bizarre. So I think that will be the next big catalyst, and I think they will have to approve it. It's just a question of who behind, like the only reason the SEC were forced to approve the spot ETF was because places like Coinbase had the money to fight them and the dedication to take them to court. If those players didn't exist, this thing would never be approved. And as you said, per that statement, Gary does not like it. He wants to keep have his cake and eat it and keep friends on both sides. And uh, it's just a corrupt world. Um, but he he the reason he approved it was, again, a gun to his head. He had no choice. Didn't want to. And the same thing will happen. If there's a legal force to push the Ethereum ETF, that'll happen too. Hmm. Oh, very interesting. Interesting, interesting. Let's shift gears a little bit. We... Um... Okay, sorry, there's something playing here. Um, so, Solana replaces XRP in Hong Kong's top five crypto index. So we've really had continued moves of um, Solana, even though price has stalled, but there's a lot of stuff going on. James, you also talk about um, <clears throat> some big airdrops happening, Jupiter, right, and, and so on. So there is a lot of stuff going on. And uh, uh, what do you see as most interesting in the Solana ecosystem at this point, James? Uh, well, that Hong Kong news was interesting last night, and it reflects a shift in the market and the importance of having a high-performance blockchain to underpin traditional finance. That's extremely important. And then we just discussed that for the last half hour about how slow these ETFs are. So that whole importance of speed and scalability and finality will be critical for the market. So it's good to see Hong Kong moving in this direction. And remember, Hong Kong is a massive financial center in Asia. So that's uh, good news. And in terms of the airdrops, I think the Jupiter airdrop will be probably the biggest airdrop of 2024. But everybody should be very, very careful of airdrop scams. If you have a wallet and all of a sudden an NFT appears in it, don't click on it. <laughs> you know, And like literally people are losing money. Remember, when you have a hot wallet, it's like having a big pipe direct directly to your bank account. And if you connect that pipe to a bad character, they can suck all the money for your bank account. So just remember, you are your own bank when you run your own wallet very important out there so stay safe exactly so for that reason leading into that i thought we should repeat some security tips i saw even on your stream you had an excellent uh you covered sorry i need to share it uh, this one i also saw it this morning independently and i felt that oh wow the scams are getting so good now they are so advanced can you 
tell us a little bit what what was this one about and and uh, some tips some security tips because the scammers are getting better and better and everyone in, without exception have to really watch out also us and everyone watching can you share some of your best tips Ivan and maybe based on yeah. this yeah <clears throat> i mean it's all about social engineering because the hacking computers too hard it's very hard but hacking your brain it's quite easy so the scammers are targeting mostly founders or known people in the space they do it by different ways like one way which is very big is to pretend to be a fake reporter and you say you know i work for decrypt or i work for the block and then you pretend that you want to interview them and then you know you send some uh, form in order to uh, to give your consent for uh, uh, for approving the article and the, it's a scam link that uh, tries to install some things on your computer so that's one example so be careful if you and it's very popular now if you have some kind of amount of followers on twitter you may get contacted by a fake reporter but then this other one which you link this uh, this one is towards everyone who works in crypto you have to be very careful because if you know that the biggest one of if not the biggest one of the biggest hacks in crypto the, on the running chain happened because one employee clicked the link which they thought would be a job offer from like a competitor to their existing company. So someone contacted an employee at Ronin Network and said, hey, we will give you like 300,000 per year or maybe even higher. It was like a super nice offer. Just click this link, you know, check out the offer, go and join us. And that link was a keylogger and the Ronin Network got hacked for 600 million dollars okay now we live in crypto we're in the crypto industry so the hack was just ah, you know we were two bad guys we're gonna try better next time so they survived like if, if nothing happened which is insane because it's 600 million gone so and this one is similar but this one is targeting uh, developers that want to work in games so the, here is a recruiter who is a scammer uh, contacting developers telling them hey download our game and of course the game is a scam but they want you to test uh, to run to to test the game because you're going to be working on <laughs> so they tell you uh download it try it here's the test uh, build uh, to run on your machine so the lesson here is number one uh, never install any executable on your machines be very careful if you have to do it like let's say you actually want to try a game do it in a virtual machine like sadly many games are downloadables in web3 which uh, we, they should be online there should be a website but uh, i know that many of them are downloadables if you want to download, just do a virtual machine download there and th that's by the way true for anything you download there's no need to download stuff nowadays nowadays in 2024 everything is on the web it should be on the web but if there is something ensure it's a virtual machine be extremely careful with pdfs uh if you get some job offer uh, likely a scam i mean be extremely careful also have a separate machine maybe not your main machine i mean all of or or uh, a phone like uh, in um, if you if you compare downloading something to your uh, laptop fully without uh, any protection or the, uh, the phone the phone at least has a bit more sandbox built into it but anyway be extremely careful with that and always always have uh, most of the funds in a, a hardware cold storage wallet ideally a multi-sig uh, but uh, that's uh, i mean that's it guys and the thing is you need to you need to know you need to hear it because in the heat of the situation you know you get a job offer you're on a friday you're relaxing oh man you know maybe this is a great job offer. you just click without thinking and these social engineering scammers they're very very good uh i mean i have one experience of social engineering which was like way simpler than this but it was one of these emails when i was in university that said that your email inbox is full and I was like, you know, uh, uh, running somewhere in, in not a lot of time. And now you get an email saying that, you know, your inbox is full. Click here to like expand your inbox. It's so mm -hmm. simple. But in the heat of the moment, I clicked it and they obviously ask you to log in. It looks exactly like the real site. Without thinking too much, I uh, wrote my email. But the good thing is it was like university email. But then it, it hit me. Crap. <laughs> I, I got fished. So always, always remember it because it will hit you, man. If, if you don't repeat it, you don't hear about the stories, it will hit you. So cybersecurity, guys, it's one of the biggest threats to your, I mean, now with crypto to actually your personal wealth, if you don't follow the basic rules of uh, cold storage and hardware wallet and so on. Exactly. Because I think that one thing that is really in the season now, I think there's a lot of airdrops going on, which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of people who have been earlier trying different services, maybe just to experiment, they are now being rewarded with airdrops of those actual 
projects and coins, which could turn out very valuable. So this is one way if guys you want to, if you have time to spend, not so much money, try out all the different projects because I think many of them will later airdrop coins to those early users who were trying the network. And that's a fantastic way to, to you know, get some funds to invest later if you don't have any funds. But while doing that, make sure that you don't get your wallets drained because here you will need to experiment and you probably will get scammed at some point. One of those projects will turn out to be a straight out scam and you didn't see it. So the way to isolate is to have different wallets for the different things. So you don't have just one big wallet where you have all your Bitcoin and Ethereum and everything and all your coins and you connect that to what the 101st service because then I'm telling you 100 second is going to drain all your coins. You need to have one storage wallet which is a hardware wallet and you only send coins in and out using the native hardware wallet application. You don't connect it to anything at all. And then you have another wallet, which can be a software wallet, a MetaMask or something, and you send in some coins to try exactly that service. And if it gets wiped, it's only those coins you sent in to try that service, not your entire wallet. That is kind of the base. Assume that you will get wiped and then act accordingly. That's basically the, the thing. I have also stories where I've almost gotten hacked and just like last minute realize it. So Assume it's going to happen and in, iso, insulate each interaction. So not your whole wallet, but just that thing that you were trying to do gets drained because assume it's going to happen. Then I, I wanted to share something else, which is actually a little bit beautiful by one of the biggest crypto haters. And it was this one. Let me try to change the view. This gentleman here, John Reed Stark, he is the former chief of the SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. So I imagine that during his work there, he saw a lot of the, you know, bad side of crypto. People using Bitcoin for ransomware and stuff like that. And then all those people come complaining to him. He has to deal with it and he feels that this crypto is really, you know, just a bunch of, uh, scammers and uh, criminals, while we sitting here on another side feels different. But he replied to something here from Anthony Scaramucci. I'm uh, unsure I pronounced the right name right, but he said that this. So remember here that this is one of the big critics of crypto, and where he he writes himself. I think crypto is a mammoth Ponzi scheme. But we do agree 100% on the following critical notion. Crypto owners are extraordinarily passionate and represent a growing and powerful political constituency. Crypto owners could become one-issue voters and move the needle, the election needle, dramatically, which makes a lot of sense. The stark reality is that above all else, people have always voted with their wallets. And going forward, we will do so even more if their wallets are digital. To me, crypto seems more than just a walking dead, anti-archical alternative money system. Crypto seems more akin to an ethos, a lifestyle, a culture, and a world, we, world view. I can't help but marvel at how crypto gathers together a hedge pudgel of fed up libertarians <laughs> progressive humanitarians disgruntled youth and the global masala <laughs> yeah w one thing uh it this is post blackrock this is post etf where was he before because before this is the first good post of him i've spent like hours reading his previous stuff because he always writes like a bible he doesn't write concise text he writes like this so it's always like a big you know i scroll i read how binance how cz is a federal criminal i scroll you know all, all of it is a scam uh 
None of that was true. But now post ETF, you see how boomers are being marketed to and converting one by one. I love it. By the way, I agree. This post is very good. And we are one issue voters. Uh, if you don't like crypto, I don't like the politician. That's it. So yeah, fully correct. But it, I think it, this shows this is post approval, post BlackRock, and it's only the beginning. Yeah, we, we, had, a sh we had a show on the 29th of May, 2023, uh, and Ran was on it. And I discussed how important crypto is in politics. If you are a politician and you're anti-crypto, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Basically, words to that effect is what I said. So it's good to see this. This is this is dead right now. I like that one issue voters. And therefore, the corrupt dinosaurs that pull 70 million from the system and little brown envelopes of cash and stock options behind the scenes and backroom boiler room deals, they are going to be eliminated by this, which is great news. And they're on both sides too, you know, left and right. They're all over the place. But I like this. And that's why we need new modern politicians that are, have high levels of IQ and understand how the modern world works and understand how it's no longer about the military industrial complex and is starting wars all over the place all the time. It's about finding peace. And that's why Jason Lowry was all about how Bitcoin actually fosters peace, which is incredible as well. Um, yeah, this is brilliant. Mm. This is a great so, piece. So this is actually, I mean, love them or hate them. The new crypto faction is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And he's saying the crypto corp and core will continue to grow exponentially. So I always feel that when you hear something like this from one of the biggest critics, that's when you know that this is actually weird. It's what they call a watershed moment, and it just happened. It happened. Yeah. I, I, and I also think that it's actually very insightful because this isn't only about the technology. It's really about where are the most interesting people if we talk, you know, intellectually in the world, where in which industry, where is it? It's here. And yeah. that is not gonna go away. And that's not about technology, it really is the people and it, yeah, it was a big insight to me, actually. It, it is partly about the people, not only about the technology. And one thing that cannot be understated, if you look at the, say, the many revolutions over the past two years, you know, Canadian truckers, you got the farmers in the Netherlands, you have riots in Germany, farmers again burning stuff down in Germany yesterday and the day before, and then stuff across France and all these other places in the world. There's one common element behind this and that is anti-establishment or anti or whatever he called it it was a very good word and that is bubbling up and the underpinning of that revolution are things like crypto so it, it's all like a big tent yeah, what's it called a keg of gunpowder about to blow and it'll change and, everything and maybe it has blown because now there are articles like this this came out today World Economic mm -hmm. Forum, which is like the symbol for the traditional world somehow. Blockchain is in from the cold and stable yeah. coins are set to change the financial system forever. And I mean, it's we're, very we're at positive 17K, want. 20K. I mean, now we're at 44, like 42. Now they want it. it it's crazy, guys, because even they follow the price and their sentiment follows the price. It is insane. And it also, insane. like you said... Tito, I, I like what you said about the intellectual. Like, th it is the fact that the most interesting people are in crypto, whether you look at Elon Musk, whether you look at everyone else involved building. But then if you look at who is not in crypto, who is the critiques, they are literally still discussing whether you can divide the pizza into more slices and it will be more of it. I don't know if you guys followed, but there, there was another critique of Bitcoin that there was some trad by professor that came out and said that it's not uh, it's not um, uh, scarce because you can divide it into satoshis. I mean, that's the yeah. level of critique we're, we're still getting. And then the whole Twitter blew up with this like artificial <laughs> intelligence uh, pizza slice <laughs> yeah. pictures. That's and so yeah, it's, 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 it's not even close. You have Gary Gensler, like you have Elizabeth Warren. I mean, that, that is the crew. And on the other side, you have Elon Musk, also Jack Dorsey with his Bitcoin, although he's a maxi. Uh, everyone, all the researchers and devs involved in crypto, it's not even comparable. Yeah. And, and this, this is one of the things that the TradFi is really afraid of, is stable coins is one of the many use cases. Remittances, payments, all of these things destroy the TradFi system. 
destroy yeah. it. And blockchain technology increases not only just transparency, reduces transaction costs to zero pretty much, and it makes it accessible to the world through a mobile phone. And this is what they're afraid of. They no longer control the monopoly of money. And this is why the Warrens exist and many others. So... Mm, let's take some questions. I think <clears throat> I think the smart people in crypto, but I respectfully degree, disagree. The smartest people are now mostly in AI. I think it's not either or. And I think I also think uh, it's the most interesting people in crypto, interesting to talk to. <clears throat> While I think a lot of smart people are seeing that as we move more and more digitally, which a lot of technologies are converging into there is only one digital system for transferring something of value like money or objects digitally and that is blockchain that's the only technology we've invented and as we live more digitally which i think that now um there's so many things happening it's ai it's generative um, images generative video we will get vision pro from apple which i'm sure will further accelerate this you know digital living we are sitting here talking digitally now. We don't need to meet at the convention center anymore. And everything has gone digital. And that means that the money will also go digital and global. No one cares here on this chat who is living in which country. It's all global. It's all digital. And um, yeah, I think they will work to together to, to you know reinforce each other is the word I'm looking yeah, at. Your, your colleague there is correct. There is, uh, the money is flowing into AI now, not into crypto. I shared a chart a few weeks ago. It was like an X. <laughs> and that's a lot of it is because of the anti-crypto nature of like US government, etc. But AI and crypto will converge across so many areas, not just finance, not just innovative solutions, but also portfolio management, and maybe AI generated art. It's all well, sold as NFTs. So many different things. They're both going to converge, no doubt about that. But there is one big difference, and that's the level of uh, uh, peopleness. How do you say? It? How, you know, crypto is for the people. Community. It's everyone from you know truck driver to white collar, blue collar. It's it's really a people's movement. AI is not like that. I mean we all use AI with you know chat GPT generation, but it, but it's you know you're not part of it really. You're you you don't really care about chat GPT three and four in the way that you care about you know Cardano, Gogan, the next update or Solana Fire Dancer. It's it's not at all the same. So there is a big difference, but yes, they will converge as part of this digitalization. Global money will happen. No permissions. That's another thing. Whether Vanguard, you know, they have their website, they don't allow you to buy a Bitcoin. You cannot have it like that in the future. So permission and uh, the fact that uh, freedom, this idea of freedom of money, it's, it's massive. It's not going to go away. Yeah. Here's a good question by JJ Doc. Always afraid that we're in our own bubble and forget to look outwards. What do you think? That is, I agree 100%. So, I mean, that's what I try to have as like the, from an investment perspective, I'm not going to lose interest no matter what the market does because i truly believe that technology will make it but from an if you're asking from an investment perspective that's the purpose of these kind of black and white uh traffic signals if the trend is down i act differently but right now the trend is still up that's my own personal reality check that i don't get so excited by uh, everything that's going on that I kind of lose track of what is actually happening on the market. Yeah. <clears throat> and for me, I, I always refer to this as keeping your head out the window, not just in the car looking at the road ahead. Stick your head out the sunroof or out the window and look all around because the reason we invest is we invest in disruption. It doesn't matter what form it is, whether it's crypto or AI or robotics or energy storage or whatever, that is where we need to be as investors it just so happens that crypto is a big part of it so uh i wouldn't say i, I definitely if i ever found myself in a bubble i'd give up what i'm doing but you gotta watch everything that's happening in the world whether it be macro politics money trad five whatever every single trend and you got to be on top of it every single day because the world is changing yeah. extremely quickly do you think this will be the year we get a viral crypto game? Ivan, do you want to guess? You have the maybe for the well, no, this year, that, there's a good chance. I mean, we have all the tech needed. There, there's a good yeah. chance someone just needs to build it. The problem, though, 
is that the ICO space and like the the bull market it distracts people a bit from the core from the core building. But uh, my hope is with all the games that have been building through the bear market, whether it's Star Atlas or some other new uh, new one that I haven't heard about that has been building, uh, they have a chance now. As crypto gets more eyes on it, it they really really have a chance to launch something nice and uh, and, and uh, take us to mass adoption because gaming is probably the easiest way to to get, to get us there. This is the biggest wealth transfer between generations ever existed, and we are alive and part of it. That is one thing that I really love the most about this, because this is maybe the only chance. Some Say some smart guy sitting in Pakistan working at very low wage, he could never get out of that situation through the traditional. He calls uh, you know, Bank of America and want to invest in some stock. They will never take him as customer. But he can get into crypto and get rich. And then Bank of America want to you know, have him in or whoever. And, and by the way, it really is inclusive for real. On chain, like you say, CTO, it's all inclusive. If you have an ENS domain, you are part of the or Solana domain, you, and you see each other on Twitter, you know that you know we're the same community, or you have the same NFT, no matter which country you're from. So that's that, that's a very interesting view on it. I love that crypto in crypto we have this you know NFT profile pictures. It's very popular because that really puts this level playing field, and we can all unite in uh, different communities based on our interests, on our investments, and and that's really global and and uh, cross. Uh, continent, cross skin color, religion, and so on and so forth. There is nothing else like this. And the same guy, I mean, what is he going to do in AI? Like he's going to, what, use chat GPT for, I mean, maybe he could use chat GPT for something, but again, it, it's not at all the same as with crypto. Crypto is people's movement. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the question kind of also tied back to like the the generational wealth transfer as well. $68 trillion will move from people over 65 to Gen X and millennials over the next 20 years, $68 trillion. And these people, these young people that get this money, and over the next 20 years, these young people go from being 25 to 45 or whatever, but they are not going to invest in gold. And they probably may not even invest in stocks, but they will be investing in crypto and other stuff. And that's what's also huge. And that goes back to the point that that fellow said uh, about how it is a single voter issue. If you do not support, and this goes back to the earlier point of Vanguard, if you try and dictate what people can do and you take away their freedom of what they do with their own money, you become an enemy like that. And that's important. I've been gaming for 20 years. The only game that looks decent is big time. Okay. I haven't tried it. I have to check it out. <clears throat> there was some question now i lost it here in the flow about dark pools not sure what that is um institutions investing through dark pools to not yeah. be shown on chain i'm not sure what it is do you know yeah that's like the dark web uh play um, ways of manipulating behind the scenes uh with crypto that's definitely happening to some extent mm. how much we don't know yeah um <clears throat> All right, let me look for a few more questions. Mm. Yeah, that was actually one thing, other thing that I thought that I reflected on now that we had this big moment with ETF. It is something that people have talked about for seven or even 10 years. And now it happened. It happened last week. So it's like a decade of preparation that actually happened. And then I'm thinking with 10 years back, those people, I wasn't in crypto then, but I'm sure some people were pushing for this Bitcoin ETF 10 years ago. That's one decade ago. The world has changed a lot since then. And then I started thinking of back, like how the world was, you know, in the 90s and in the, in the 80s, because I'm very old. And I realized how much the world has changed. It has, It is totally different. I feel the same, but actually the world around me has totally changed. It's almost unrecognizable in many ways. And that... I think it will going to continue and I think it will accelerate. I do think that many of the truths that we feel are given, like the traditional finance will be against crypto and we're some small rebels here. Perhaps that totally changes. Perhaps in 10 years, crypto is like the established truth around the world and everyone has forgotten that they were against it before little bit like many other technologies. I feel that it can actually happen, that the world can dramatically change much more than we can imagine today. I uh, had this kind of thought. 
it's not really a question. I just, you know, wanted to share that. Well, I mean, it's very true. I remember myself, I was, I mean, I was like 13 or something at that time. But when I saw iPhone, I was like, man, this is not going to (laughs) work. Like the rain is, the rain is going to come on the screen. How I'm going to use it. (laughs) I don't want, I want my Sony Ericsson, you know, it's nice. You get the snakes. And then, you know, as soon as you get the first uh, smartphone, always loved it. Always amazed, fantastic tech. So the same is going to be with crypto. Just like that SEC guy, he'll, no, he's one voter issue now, like saying that it's, it's, it's powerful absolutely absolutely correct it's it's funny you mentioned the rain there was a guy i won't mention his name he does tech reviews and his biggest complaint about the saga phone is fingerprints on the back and his biggest complaint about the cyber truck fingerprints on the cyber truck reminds me of your rain on the phone it's yeah, exactly. like you don't, you don't <laughs> cut all of the car and exactly. you know the laptop i remember yeah i mean th- th- that's when i was like seven or so but i remember you know some guy told you know laptop it i mean it's, it's so brittle you know it, it's, it's not gonna work you and it, it breaks you need to have stationary computer desktop good big box with good screen so yeah my crazy it's, it changes fast it changes fast let's take a few more questions what do you guys think about the brc20 ordinals l2 narrative it's going to be a is it going to be a big narrative i think we might have lost eva but um what do you think? Yeah, so sorry, yes, I mean, okay, uh, we're still there. What do you think about the BRC20 Ordinals L2 narrative? Do you think it will survive or is it like a fad? Well, I'm more bullish now than before because it seems that the devs that were uh, against it are losing. They're losing the social consensus. So I think BRC20s are here to stay. I'm a believer now. Also, the amount of projects building on top, it's insane. It's like its own rabbit hole where they have their own protocols on top and they're going to do DeFi. On, like it's, and it's massive in China. There is a massive geographical arbitrage where uh, Westerners, they don't really get it. Uh, I mean, myself included, I just got into it maybe three weeks ago that I start to switch from this. You know, it's just, you know, some weird addition on Bitcoin, which is not made for purpose. It's just crazy hack to wait a second. Like people love it. And I'm not here to be Gary Gensler. Like even if it's like not made for purpose, people still love it and they're going to use it. And they really love their ordinals. And there is, a, there are, I mean, there is a um, track, which is like a coin for a protocol to organize all of this different uh, ordinal uh, information. Then there is TAP protocol launching is going to be DeFi. I mean, it's, it's a ton. It's a ton, guys. So I'm not, and you should try Xverse wallet for it. It's like a, a Bitcoin wallet, but with support. I mean, it's a lot, guys. Don't fade it. Don't, definitely don't fade it. Try it and then decide for yourself. Mm. We never saw DeFi coming. Could there be something completely new this year that we don't even know we need yet? Do you have any any like bubblers that you feel like this is crazy, but you know it could become something if it catches on? Well, it goes back to kind of what you touched on with the WF and stable coins. That's a huge use case. Payments, remittances tied into that huge use case, and also DeFi is so much better than it was the last bull run it is absolutely a game changer you can now do everything in one platform you can swap you can you do perps leverage you don't need a vpn or anything else you can swap anything it's just you can dca speaking of dca or on the dca show it has come so much further and i think you know DeFi summer what was it 2020 2021 i can't remember that everything was still infantile and kludgy and expensive. Now everything is mature and it runs real smooth. And that is the big that is the big difference. And that that combination with that, with what you mentioned about games, you know, once we get one DAP that drives a hundred million users, then crypto goes to a billion users real fast. And then it's a huge space that's transforming the entire world instantaneously. And that's what we're looking for. When that'll happen, I don't know. But I do know over the next two years, between 2024 and 2026, the world will radically change like you've never seen or the world has ever seen in the history of it because of all of the S curves converging. And that's what's both terrifying and exciting out there. And if you're not positioned correctly, you're going to miss out on the opportunity, the biggest opportunity in the history of this world. And there's no doubt about that. What do you guys think? I think, for example, payments is completely underserved, and anyone who has tried to collect payment on the internet, on the internet, you know how bad all the traditional solutions are, how how ridiculously bad it is, and how good crypto is by comparison. It's just that it's too, you know, rough for most people to to set it up. Um, 
We want to do you have any other thoughts on that? Otherwise, I'll take the last question and then we close. Yeah, I mean, for, for payment, just one thing to add, like as long as crypto doesn't fix recurring uh, revenue, it's going to be tough for companies to adopt it because the way it works is that uh, companies are valued based on recurring revenue. That's the be- I mean, if you have recurring revenue in your company, that's the best way to have a nice fundraising. Like you can see that, you know, we're building recurring revenue and this and that and that. If crypto does not have that, it's going to be tough. Now, for one-time payments, like, you know, paying for t-shirt or something, paying for a computer game, you pay one time, it works. But uh, I feel that most, like, corporations, businesses of all sizes, they really need recurring. And for that, I don't know how we're going to solve it because wallets need to support it. There are ways to solve it with smart contracts, but if it's not in the wallet, it's going to feel always shady. You know, you transfer your funds into some contract that's going to take it every month. So for users, it's it's uh, it's something... I mean, if you want crypto payments, it needs to be recurring and we don't have it. <laughs> so that, that, there, that's guys, you guys who are watching who are developers, please build this and then you have your killer app for 2024. I would use it as a you know business, and maybe I'm sure Ivan and uh, James too. So you know you have three customers if you build something good here. And um, now I'll take the last question, the most important question of the day. Important question: Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? NFA, <laughs> not food advice. So James, yes or no? Um, the core of a pineapple has actually has a lot of very powerful medicinal properties that can cure a lot of things. So you should research that. Uh, I have nothing against pineapple, just uh, it's high in sugar, but it has some very powerful elements to it as well. And uh, why not? You can put anything you want on anything you want. We should be free to do whatever you want. Uh, Uh, Libertarian answer from James. Uh, Yvonne? I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but good good for you guys if if you're eating it. For me, it's a hard no. No pineapple on pizza. What is it called? It's Hawaii or what is I, I always get confused about pizza names. Like bat. Maybe it's only in Sweden. I don't know if these names are international. But in Sweden, no. I, you I you know. have like Batman, Hawaii. This this pineapple one is Hawaii. But <laughs> I, I never I have know. I to say that region. because we have some uh, members from Italy in the community, oh. and I'm worried <laughs> that you know they will come here and uh, you know hit me on my face if I say anything else. But it's so, funny because pizza can be very political as well. Like I lived in New York and Chicago, and they have different rules around on pizza and they hate each other because of it and then you got hawaii putting pineapple on pizza because they have a lot of pineapple there but it's like putting cheese on sushi i think there's certain things that should not happen um in my opinion but it's just so funny how political even food can become at the end of the day people should be allowed to do whatever the hell they want is my opinion exactly and we learned the word anti the established meant disestablishment I, I i couldn't do it uh, i will practice <laughs> on next week guys thank you so much thank you to both of you and don't forget to subscribe i haven't said it to james and ivan if you're not already but of course you are mm-hmm. and uh, next monday which channel are we on then ivan's channel i think oh yes yeah, sorry guys then we will see you all and then, on and then maybe maybe the christmas sock will be gone next monday we're not sure yet <laughs> I need to order new ones. Actually, I mean, it disappeared. I don't know what happened, but the pop filter, one day it was just gone. I have no clue how the hell it happened. And it was Christmas. I thought we have a solution here. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, have a great week. Have a great week, everybody awesome, out there. Guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. See you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.